Sandra, thank you so much for sharing your story and your truth about losing Reggie at such a young age. We're so honored by your presence and your courage to tell your story to all of us. My name is Alan Casey, and along with John Bridgeland and an extraordinary team of people, I've been honored to be one of the organizers of 24-7, the people's filibuster for gun safety. I'm also the co-founder of City Year, along with Michael Brown and Jenny Uplett Riley and Neil Silverstein. City Year is a youth service program that unites young adults from all backgrounds for a year of full-time service in urban schools, mentoring and tutoring children through AmeriCorps. I'll never forget, on the morning of October 5th, 1990, very early in the morning, I got a phone call that one of our core members, Tyrone Gunn, had been shot and killed in an act of senseless violence. It stunned me, it saddened me, it shocked me to my core. And all of us at Syria, we were only 75 core members then. Even in five weeks, we become a family. And we gathered together. We did what we could to support Tyrone's mom and his family. And we were deeply honored when his mom asked his city or team members to be the pallbearers at his funeral. But it had really shooken all of us. We brought in grief counselors. We shared the pain, the frustration, the anger, and didn't know what to do. You see, we were supposed to be the idealistic people, the people coming from all backgrounds, uniting the city, inspiring the city, taking care of children, young people, bringing people together. And we just lost one of our own. We worked together, we got through it. But all of us were deeply affected, and the year wasn't the same. About 19 months later, on May 18th of 1992, I was at the Morning Star Baptist Church for the funeral of Robert Odom. A city of corps member who was a dear friend of his wanted to go, and she had no one to go with her. So I said I'd, I'd go. And in the middle of the service, a group of young people barged in to the church, grabbed one of the young people there, started beating them, stabbing them, and then shots rang out inside the church. I was frightened. I couldn't believe it in the middle of a church service. But that was the tipping point for Boston. And the faith community rallied to create the Ten Point Coalitions, people I'm honored to say are friends of mine, Reverend Eugene Rivers, Bruce Wall, John Borders from Morningstar, Ray and Gloria Hammond, and others realized that if the violence had gone in the church, the church had to get outside the church and into the community. And they partnered with the police. Commissioner Francis Mickey Roach, who was also a friend and early supporter of City Year. And the ministers and the police went hand in hand and started community policing and police got out of their cars and they went into the neighborhoods together. The business community jumped in. The civic community partnered. And a whole host of things were done expanding after-school programs, midnight basketball, more summer job programs, more mentoring programs, more service programs, more counseling programs. And Boston started to enforce Massachusetts' strict gun safety laws, which were the strongest in the country. And it worked. We did not have a death of a young person by gun violence for two and a half years. It was called the Boston Miracle, but it wasn't a miracle. It wasn't rocket science. It wasn't like trying to find a cure for cancer. It was a community rallying, doing the things we know that must be done, that we invest in our young people, understanding that too many like Tyrone or Reggie and countless others are our future teachers, our coaches, our doctors, our lawyers, our civic leaders, and everyone, and rallying together 
refusing to fail to get it done. So we know we can do this. We just have to have, as Dr. King said, the political will and the moral sense of the fierce urgency of now. I have been so heartened and hopeful and inspired by so many of you who have taken the podium of 24-7, just like Sandra, to share your truth, to bear your souls, to demand that Congress act. I've been moved to tears so many times over the course of this past week, inspired by your courage and your ongoing faith in America, even though you've suffered unbearable loss. And Congress is listening. And we're on the verge of a historic breakthrough led by the gun safety organizations, Brady, Everytown, Giffords, March for Our Lives, Moms Demand Action, Sandy Hook Promise, and so many other organizations who we are honored to be partnering with in this effort, just trying to support your leadership and the hundreds of thousands of your members across the country that have been at this for years and years and years. And it's because of your leadership that we're going to get this historic breakthrough today. But I also know that once this happens, you're going to be right back at it. You're going to stay at it until we finally end the scourge of gun violence in our country and our communities where people aren't safe to go to the grocery store or to the mall or to nightclubs or to places of worship or to schools. And just today, on this historic day for gun safety, with this breakthrough after 30 years, we have the Supreme Court ruling saying that New York can't enforce its own laws. So I know you're going to be right back at it. All of us have to stay at this and keep raising our voices and join together until we finally rid our country of the scourge of gun violence. And we at 24-7 will do our part to support your leadership. Thank you.